Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how alkanes can be cracked by thermal cracking and catalytic cracking. You should then be able to describe the economic reasons for cracking alkanes. In the last video we looked at how fractional distillation is used to separate the alkanes in crude oil. Remember that fractional distillation separates based on boiling point. Shorter chain alkanes have lower boiling points than longer chain alkanes. So we find shorter chain alkanes in the fractions near the top of the fractionating column. Now the petrol naphtha fraction is particularly useful. This fraction is used to make petrol for vehicles and is a raw material for the chemical industry. However, there is a problem. Crude oil tends to contain a higher proportion of longer chain hydrocarbons than shorter chain. So when we carry out fractional distillation of crude oil, we do not produce a large amount of the petrol naphtha fraction. In contrast, we produce more of the longer chain fractions which are less in demand. So because of this, there's an economic benefit to converting long chain hydrocarbons into shorter chain hydrocarbons. And we do this by a process called cracking. Now cracking has two benefits. Firstly, cracking converts long chain hydrocarbons into shorter chain hydrocarbons. And as we've seen, there's a greater demand for shorter chain hydrocarbons. Secondly, as well as producing alkanes, Cracking also produces alkenes, and unlike alkanes, alkenes are highly reactive molecules. Alkenes are a major feedstock or raw material for the chemical industry, and are used to make a range of products including polymers. Now there are several ways to carry out cracking. Two methods are thermal cracking and catalytic cracking, and you should be able to describe the conditions for these. We're going to start with thermal cracking. Thermal cracking requires both a high temperature and a high pressure. The temperature ranges from around 450 degrees Celsius to 900 degrees Celsius, and the pressure is around 70 atmospheres. In thermal cracking, long chain alkanes form both shorter chain alkanes and alkenes, and hydrogen can also be one of the products. So the products I'm showing you here are examples of what we could form. However, I should point out that the specific products depend on the exact conditions. Now the benefit of thermal cracking is that we make a high percentage of alkenes in the products, and as we've seen, alkenes are very useful molecules due to their high reactivity. In the exam, you could be asked to complete a cracking equation like this, given the starting material and some of the products. Remember that the total number of carbon and hydrogen atoms must be the same on both sides of the equation. And if different isomers are possible, then that will be taken into account in the question. Now during thermal cracking, a covalent bond between two carbon atoms splits to form intermediate molecules. Remember that a covalent bond is a pair of electrons. When the covalent bond splits, both of the intermediate molecules now have one unpaired electron. Scientists call molecules like this free radicals. And we're going to be looking at other reactions involving free radicals in later videos. I should point out though that you're not required to know the mechanism for thermal cracking. OK, let's look now at catalytic cracking. Catalytic cracking also requires a high temperature, in this case around 450 degrees Celsius. However, catalytic cracking does not require high pressure. In fact, the pressure for catalytic cracking is 1 to 2 atmospheres. Catalytic cracking uses a zeolite catalyst, which contains a mixture of aluminium oxide and silicon dioxide. Zeolite has a large surface area, which helps to make it an effective catalyst. Now, when a long chain alkane undergoes catalytic cracking, the products are often branch chain alkanes. And branch chain alkanes are especially useful for petrol, as they combust very efficiently. Catalytic cracking can also produce cyclic alkanes and aromatic hydrocarbons such as benzene. OK, so hopefully now you can describe thermal cracking and catalytic cracking. 